Hi there, I'm Champion Trader Kevin Davey, and this is another video in the series on algo trading performance metrics. So let's get started. Today, we're going to talk about performance metrics that are what I call extremes. You might say, what's that? Well, you'll see in a second. I'm also going to give you some pointers, pitfalls, some tips as we go along, just as we discuss these numbers. I'm going to show you some realistic results and realistic numbers so you can kind of gauge your own strategy development and say, hey, am I in the range of what Kevin's doing or am I totally different? And then finally, I'm going to tell you how you can do it yourself. If you have questions, first, leave a comment. That way, other people can see, and they probably have similar comments, similar questions, or you can send me an email. I answer all emails. Here's your typical performance report. Again, this is in TradeStation. Other platforms have a different layout, but they still have the basic same numbers. And the problem with any of these is there's just a lot of numbers. You look at it and you say, well, coefficient of variation, Oh my gosh, that's low. What do I got to do about that? A lot, <laughs> you know, a lot of these numbers really don't mean a whole lot. Uh, and a lot of times the better the number is, the worse the strategy works in real time. That is really hard for a lot of people to get their head around. But the numbers I'm showing you today were built with strategies the right way. And they're actually strategies I trade. So at the time of this video, these are 30 of the strategies I'm trading live. So this includes, in the numbers I'm going to show you, this includes both real-time performance and walk-forward out of sample performance. So sometimes you'll see numbers and you'll be like, hey, these aren't that good. What? This is some champion trader. What the heck? These aren't good. I can do better. But remember, a lot of times what you're seeing are real-time results at least a portion of all those tests are real-time and that usually lowers the numbers but hopefully this will give you a good gauge for your own trading and again it's worth repeating these numbers out of sample in real time they're not optimized they'd be a heck of a lot better if they were all optimized good test good way to think about things Take a look at two performance reports, and if you find yourself comparing them, watch out, especially if you didn't create the systems, because the problem is they're impossible to compare unless you know exactly how they were built. Now, if A and B were both built the same with the same process, you, you could probably say that B is better. But you can't always depend on that because you don't know how they were developed. So watch out for that. Today's numbers, what I'm going to look at are what I call extreme metrics. Okay? And that's the largest winning trade, the largest losing trade. And then we're going to look at consecutive winners and consecutive losers. And I think you're going to find this really interesting. Some of these numbers, I was surprised when I looked at them, because I normally don't look at things like consecutive winners and losers, but I did here. Largest win. You can see, usually my largest win, half of them are between 5,000 and 25,000. This is per contract. And I have one system that is way up there. Um, $57,000 its was its largest win. So you can imagine that probably stayed in a trade for a heck of a long time and just rode that winner. Uh, and that's usually a good way to go. You ride those winning trades. On the left, again, is something called a box plot or box, box and whiskers. There's a couple different names for it, but it's something statisticians use. And the way to think about it is half of my strategies, the, the, maxim, um, the largest winning trade, the maximum winning trade falls within that box. Then I wanted to look at largest loss. You can see I actually had a system that had a $30,000 loss and you could say, holy mackerel, what are you doing? That's ridiculous. 
Yeah, sometimes some of these strategies, they look great, but once in a while they have this, um, I don't even know if you call it a black swan, it's just a killer loss. So you got to watch out for those. And obviously, hey, are they right for everybody? No, you got to balance these with the rest of your portfolio and your account size and figure out if you can actually trade them. But most of my systems, their loss, the biggest loss is somewhere in the $2,000 to $10,000 range with an average of $5,000. So that, that's a pretty big chunk. So think about that. You know, if you only have a $5,000 account, you know, you got to watch out what markets you're trading because you can get some big losses here. And this would be with stop losses, without stop losses. Um, sometimes I have really high stop losses, which you might be seeing there. Now, I decided to look at the ratio of the largest win to the largest loss. And it shows what you'd kind of think, that the largest win is on average about twice what the average largest loss is over all those strategies. So it's about a two to one. And that's pretty typical, where your winners are bigger than your losers. Now we look at max consecutive winners, and I'm also gonna look at max consecutive losers. So what's interesting here is, I actually had a strategy, I had 23 wins in a row. Wow, that's pretty neat. Then I also had a system that only had three wins consecutively ever. That was its most ever. Most of them fall in the 6 to 11 range, or at least half of them do. So that means you could get quite a few consecutive winners. On the losing side, you get about the same thing. 5 to 12 consecutive losers. And I actually had a system that lost 25 times in a row. And you could be saying, how could you trade something like that? Well, the answer is you really can't if that's the only system you're trading. It would be impossible psychologically for people to, to withstand 25 losers in a row. You, you beat yourself up. But if it's in a portfolio and I know that over time it's gonna make money because the winners will outweigh the losers, then I might be able to do it because I'm not tuned in to every single loss. I just look at the net profit over a period of time. So just because it has a ton of losers in a row doesn't mean you have to throw it away. But keep in mind, it's also psychologically, if you look at every system every day, oh, there's another loser for this system, another loser, another loser. That can get kind of uh, painful. So let's look at the max consecutive losers versus the max consecutive winners. And I'm going to plot it versus the winning percentage. So it kind of makes sense that you're not going to have a lot of consecutive losers the higher your winning percentage, right? And if you had a real low winning percentage, you'd have a lot of consecutive losers. So that's why there's this curve you can kind of see here. And, and my strategies adhere to it. It makes sense. What's interesting, though, is if you start looking at randomness, uh, just as an example, let's say you had a 50% winning strategy right here on this line. So there's a 3% chance that you'd have five consecutive losers. Okay, you can do the math on it. And you can see I have more than that. I actually have a couple strategies that have around six and then as you branch out, you have even more. The chances of that are very small. Yet, in the course of a historical backtest, it happens. And that's where people get messed up. They, oh, it's never, I'm never going to have five consecutive losers. I win 50% of the time. That would be like flipping a coin and getting five tails in a row. Not going to happen. Well, don't ever say never. Because it can happen. And if your back test is long enough, it will happen. So if you position size and your risk management assumes you're never going to have more than a certain number of losers in a row, watch out because I can pretty much guarantee you will at some point. And even though the odds are really small, 
it's still going to bite you. Keep that in mind as you're position sizing. Again, I say this on every one of these performance metrics videos. The numbers alone are meaningless. And the numbers mean something if the strategy is built properly, but if the strategy is built improperly, they're meaningless. If you're looking for a way to build meaningful numbers and meaningful strategies, check out my strategy factory. This is a cartoon of how it looks. You put ideas in the left side, you test, you run it on a bunch of machines, and what comes out the right side is either scrap, which I don't show, or a good trading system. Usually it's scrap, but once in a while you get a good trading system. That's what I teach in my course. Go to my website, kjtradingsystems.com, click on workshop. I have a live class every seven weeks. I think you'll find it interesting, and you'll learn how to build strategies the right way. I want to say thanks for watching this video. Please comment, subscribe, like. Those three things. That'll keep me making videos. Thanks.